Warning, graphic pest control video ahead. Do not watch if you might be offended. If, however, you really like watching pest control videos, then hello again and welcome to the Squirrel Hunter channel. Please continue and watch us as we control pest populations with silenced air rifles here in the UK. If you have any questions, can you please check the description below first to see if it's already been answered and for some useful links. Thank you. Here we are again, coming to Squirrel Hill. It looks like a wet morning, because it is. The weatherman said yesterday that it was going to rain. I wasn't keen to come. Bro said, don't be a wuss. It's only a bit of water. We need to go out and shoot some squirrels. And I said, okay, because I trust my big brother. His judgment is always faultless. So we've come out today to have a little bash for the squirrels. Bro's got a little tarpaulin to go on top of his hide to try and keep it waterproof and I'm going to sit in my car because I'm lazy like that. I'm going to do a brev, sit in the car and shoot out of that. I've rocked up now. First position, this is where Bro shoots from. I drop him off there, the Air Arms S510 in 177 calibre and he's shooting Barracuda Hunter Extremes. They do do a good job. I'll put you over to him first of all. He's sat in his hide, he's taking his test shots. And the first visitor to the feeder is an opportunistic, moist pheasant. Looks like it's been out in the rain. It's not pheasant season. It's probably a straggler from last year that's managed to survive. And even if it was, we're not authorised to shoot it anyway. So don't bother to comment why didn't I shoot it. What it's doing. I think it's picking up some spilt grains. Messy eating squirrels have dropped. With a lid on that feeder. Pretty much only the squirrels can get in. Maybe the odd rat. You can see as the pheasant mooches about, we got our first visitor. Squirrels run straight that pole. You can see Bro's wedged the lid up on his hopper. Usually allows for some birds to come in and have a free feed. This squirrel sat up nicely. It's slapped straight to the floor. Good solid headshot. You can see by the reaction of the pheasant, it's more concerned with what that squirrel's up to kicking around than the noise of the shot. And that is the beauty of a silenced air rifle. Cut straight into squirrel two. As I said in previous videos, I've moved closer to Bro's position and stealing some of his squirrels off him. bit mean of me, I know, but we will rectify that next year. But for this year, we're just going to keep our positions where they are. If you haven't guessed already, I'm suffering from a bit of man flu, so my apologies. Got a bit of a croaky voice. There we go, that's what you want to see. Nice straight on headshot. Straight between the eyes. Nothing wrong with that shot. You can see just how difficult it is to see things on the ground with only the barest vegetation to cover it. When we go to check on the feeders, we tend to do a bit of gardening. But this one's quite away from our home, so we don't tend to visit this one that often. If one of the other lads pop over, we'll check each other's feeders, see if it's dropped down, inform each other by group chat on Facebook. Say, hey, your feed has been hit. Stomach moving around. Bro's got the camera on. That tree there. It's a known route for squirrels to come in on. They come down the bank, climb the tree. They move over and run up that pole. I'm assuming this is a squirrel. If you hadn't spotted it already, the branch movement gives it away. Something's going on. This one's being a bit coy. We 
the fact that it's managed to circumvent Bro's camera. I think it must have jumped onto the roof of the feeder. If it's on the feeder now, then it's in trouble. Although it doesn't know it yet, now the camera's fixed on it, Bro's picking up his rifle, placing it on the sticks, and getting comfy ready for a shot. There we go. See that quick head movement? Here we go, this time. Another straight on head shot. Pretty much standard kick about on the ground. It's always handy, especially when they move away from the feeder. Doesn't put the next ones off so much. It's all over for that squirrel. See the sun's come out now. Birds in the trees. Bro's weather prediction was correct. It's quite a way into the morning now, if I'm not mistaken. This feeder doesn't perform as well since I moved closer to it. I know I keep saying that, but this wood is absolutely heaving with squirrels. This is our first year here. We've told the owner we're going to go for a hundred squirrels. And everyone counts. You can only shoot them if they turn up. We will be moving feeders at some point at the end of this season when the pheasants come on again. We're not allowed to shoot the area. Which is not a problem because there's a lot of feeders out for the pheasants anyway. And a lot of the squirrels will be drawn to them. And our feeders will be there. And they'll be getting familiar with them. Looks like our moist pheasants dried out a little bit. Doesn't look his best, does he? It's a bit sad in all honesty. Nice bit of sun, probably cheer him up. He's probably wondering what's going on. June in England. That's why it's so green in this country. So it rains all the time. The birds seem to like it. Not looking his best. Bro thought he saw something, so he zoomed in. Looks like he's one eye shut. Like he's been injured or something. It's a close-up of it. Just froze the picture. That's enough of the session for the day for Bro. Then you've got a few squirrels and just showing you his little tarpaulin and he put on top of his pop-up hide. They're not waterproof. And that seemed to work quite well. So maybe we're making that an addition to the pop-up hides, a little bit of tarpaulin to throw over the top. Seems to work quite well. He sat it through all the rain showers. He's got himself a few squirrels. So no blank. All solid shots. It's actually four squirrels if I'm counting them right. Yep, four squirrels. Straight between the eyes. And another one. It's either side of the hole. That was a quarter in shot straight over the eyebrow. Or one shot kills. And another one actually straight on. One of my favourite shots. It's not a bad effort for considering I'm robbing in blind. Only for squirrels that is. I'm up next with my Theoban Rapid 2-2. I'll be launching Predator Polymag shorts. I like this combination a lot. And you can see I'm sat in the car. Resting my rifle on the pillow in the window. There I am. I've got my balaclava on to hide my face and you can see the rain this is what bro had to contend with earlier on i'm quite dry in the car only trouble is getting a bit of water on the rifle not liking that much this should give you a better picture of the conditions we chose to shoot in today normally a lot of people wouldn't bother to come out in this i went on bro's recommendation i've spotted a squirrel 
coming down the bank, that's where the camera's on. Shooting in the car as I said before. It's a bit of an awkward one to video and shoot from. Maybe I should have put the car on an angle. You can see the squirrels come in despite the rain. They've got to eat. It's not like they can rely on a freezer in their dray. Pull them out and microwave it like we do. Or some of us do. We've got to go out to forage. Canopy of the trees. Probably helping a bit. Need to get a rain shield on top of that. No worries. See the air rifle shooting just to the right of the picture, creating a cloud of mist. It's a damp air, I think. The air coming at the end of the rifle vaporised it. Not actually in the gun. Because I'm shooting from the car, it's a bit more awkward to zoom in all the time. I don't want to move too much because the car might bounce on its suspension. Nothing wrong with that shot. Pony Mag's found its target. That squirrel went down for me. Pulled my rifle in, I think. Try and keep the rain off it. It's starting to be quite stressful. A bit of water's getting into my car as well. Not quite liking that. Wish I'd gone with Bro's method of a little tarpaulin on top. But I think I might make some adaptations to my hide. The rain's slowing down now. A lot of the rain came early on. Another vaguely moistened pheasant coming in. Not sure if it's the same one. We'll soon see in a minute. See if it's got a closed eye or not. Even when it rains, you can usually get one local one. That's what we think happens anyway. There'll be drays somewhere near this area. And they'll obviously be the first to make it here. Other ones will travel from distance if they know there's a lone feeding spot. A lot of the squirrels here I've noted in previous episodes, if you've seen them, come straight down the hill or from about two o'clock direction across. I do think they would have ended up on Bro's feeder if I hadn't intercepted them here. Quickly checking out the squirrel. Not sure what to make of him. Decided it's no problem, so it's wandered off. Move to forage somewhere else. And I'm sat in this hide getting wet and thinking to myself, I need a different tactic. I've come up with all sorts of designs on a bit of a pad I've got. Bits of wood with outriggers and magnets and all sorts of things to put on the roof of the car to shield me in future so I can poke the gun out and also to act as a bit of a darkened tunnel. The first squirrel didn't seem to have a problem with my hide. You hear the rain dripping onto the roof of the car. It's that tinny sound. There's a squirrel here somewhere. It comes in from the left. That's a bit of a race around the tree. I've obviously sped this up. Save you the trauma of watching it like I had to. Here we go. Back on standard footage, normal speed. And I'm tracking this squirrel now with a rifle. There's the camera panned back. I'm lining up on it for the shot. A puff of moist air from the end of the rifle. And the squirrel hits the deck. Pretty much a straight on head shot. You usually tell they're good when they just flop. Sometimes they'll kick and launch themselves. Just to make out the impact point, I think. At the top of the head. I'll zoom down a bit more now. Checking it for breathing. Pretty much all over. There's only nervous twitches left. During that seamless transition there, where I turn the camera off and on. 
didn't seem to move much. The squirrels appeared down the bank. That's why it's on again. I just marked it with a ring. It's at the back of the feeder. Sat on that little stick. I do that quite often. You can arrange all sorts of obstacles. And they'll tend to sit on them. Like a nice log running down to a feeder is quite a good one. They'll pretty much always run down that. Quite good if there's vegetation there. They tend to elevate them up in the air. Creatures of habit. You've just got to know what the habits are. You can use them against them. This one sat quite still. Asking the trouble if it sits there. Maybe it's eyeballing the car, thinks it's safe. I don't know, but I'm definitely tracking it with a rifle. I've decided I'm going to take a shot, so I've zoomed in a bit. Seems to be sat there quite still. Quarter in shot. Nothing wrong with that. Pellet found its mark. I said it before in other videos, you just have to get them to sit still. And when they're sat up like that, the head's such an easy target. Well, it should be if you're accurate enough. These aren't full ball rifles. These are some 12 foot pound air rifles. We're 15 yards away from the target. And we can place those pellets pretty accurately. The amount of devastation they do is quite substantial for what they are. But don't get confused with deer hunting. That would be just silly to compare the two now, wouldn't it? The camera's on. There's a squirrel down at the bottom of that tree. It's come down the bank. I've turned the camera on and then it's proceeded to mess me about something rotten. This is all the footage I have. I've just sped this section up. You can see it dashing around the tree. It's eventually decided it's going to come in get itself on the feeder and that of course is what I've been waiting for so I'm lining up on it ready to take the shot this time wallop no mess in there you should look at it down the scope first looks like it's leaping away but it's not that's just nerves I've decided it's going to let gravity get the better of it and roll down the bank. I do like a good bank, especially when it rolls towards me. Happy with that shot. I've retracted a rifle into the car now. I'll go for the zoom button on the camera, try and get a better look. And bearing in mind the camera screen is only a couple of inches. It's the best I can do to zoom in on it with. Surprising what you can see when I'm full HD in front of you on a big screen, but that's not the situation when you're out shooting. The camera's quite useful to zoom in on it with. Quite happy with that shot. Pony Mag doing the business again. We've got another squirrel. In fact, we've got two. We've got one on the base of the tree and one coming down from the top of the screen. It's two in picture. This is what happens when you get lots of squirrels around sometimes. You get more than one appear. We've had it in other videos. You can bet your bottom dollar once you've got a couple in, there's going to be a bit of an argy bargy I'm in front of you type thing. They don't do queuing. That's how you can tell that they're not from England. A nation of queuers. We see someone forming a line, we usually get on the back of it. You can tell they're from somewhere else. Don't respect the queue. There you go. Even if the one is dominant, it still disturbs it. I've left this on normal play just so you can see the behaviour. Usually wait to see which one gets the dominant position, and the other one will concede the food. Let the dominant one feed first. Even though I think that one's got the dominant position, I'm still a bit wary. I'm watching it down the scope, just in case the other one pops up and spooks it. That's the last thing you want to happen. I'm happy with its feeding pattern now. I'm preparing for a shot this time. And the other one sticks its head out from around the side of the tree. It didn't run off, did it? 
good impact off the headshot. And the second squirrel is mooching around a tree. I'm reasonably confident enough to think that when one's twitching on the floor like that, that the other one's focusing on it almost entirely. Can't quite work it out. I'm still tracking now. There's another pellet at the spout. I was decided to sit just behind the root of that tree. Pick up something off the floor to eat. Here we go. Second squirrel down. It's like a good old prance about. Kick it down the bank. Happy with the one two there. It's nice to get the two to turn up together. Different reactions from different squirrels. You can get two in one shot, so to speak. Just help with the numbers. The rain's sort of abated a bit now. All you can hear is just water dripping off the leaves. Hardly any wind. The occasional drip just rolling off the leaves above, dropping onto the car. Birds singing happily. Turned out to be a nice day. Looks like Bro was right. A spotted movement right at the top of the picture in the middle. It's one coming straight down the bank towards us. We'll see it for a fleeting moment. Then it buries itself behind the tree. And I'm just going to cut a big chunk straight out of this video. I'm not bothering to speed it up because you don't even see the squirrel. I chopped a chunk out and if you look there, I don't know what it's doing. It's mooched around behind the back of that tree. Now it's finally come into view. I lost a good 30 seconds of footage then. Still the same shot though. Behind the tree it goes again. You can see it pop out on the left hand side of the base of the tree. I thought it might come to the feeder at that point. And then it decides to wander off to the left. I chopped another great chunk straight the video to the point where it comes down the tree. Well, another one comes down the tree anyway, on the left hand side. A good minute or so of footage lost there. It was just a minute or so of looking at the feeder and nothing happening. I'd like to think it was the same squirrel, but it is a squirrel. It's actually showing some interest now. It's quite a long bit of footage. Never quite know when they're moving around, how they're gonna behave. Some will race straight in, and some will mess you about. This is more like it. This looks like a definite messer to me. It's appeared on the right-hand side of the tree again. Looks like it's coming to the feeder. The side's against it. I can only think that's the ones on the floor. are putting it off here. If you get too much of that, the tendency is to go out and pick them anyway. There we go, sat on the top of the feeder. That's asking for trouble. Nice and still, straight on shot. I'm lining up on it. Just making a judgment call on whether it's still enough. And I decided it was. What's wrong with that shot? It was right to be nervous about the other squirrels on the ground. I'm happy with that shot. Check the camera. After all that messing about, we've got a dead squirrel. It's exactly what we wanted. Rain's pretty much gone now completely. Just the odd drops from the trees. We've got the camera on. So there's a squirrel coming in. And yeah, again, I've chopped a great big chunk of video footage out. It's coming down to the left of the tree on the ground. It's more like it. Making all the right moves. Obviously it smells of other squirrels. You can see the ones on the ground. And again, we've got a messer on our hands. There was no opportunity to shoot it. I was tracking it the whole time. I judged it to be too skittish. And if in doubt, 
just don't shoot. You'll get it eventually. No prizes for wounding them. Back in real time again, and we've got a second squirrel coming up in that circle from your right. So there's two squirrels on the field to play at the moment. Maybe you'll get one too. He's making the right moves. I'll tell you now, neither of these come into the feeder and do what they should do. I can tell you now, neither of them come into the feeder. And that's the way it works sometimes. I've only included this just to let you know it's not all easy. They don't just come and present themselves for you to shoot. Sometimes they do other things. But they're around in the area. Maybe they'll change their mind. Maybe they don't fancy any wheat today, I don't know. We'll eventually turn up on the feeder one way or another and get shot. Not long after this one runs in. I did think this was a good candidate for a shot. As you'll see in a minute, it doesn't hang around. You can notice there's no squirrels on the ground. So after the last two disappeared, I went out and picked them up. And now this one's decided to run off. Whether it's one of the ones that was spooked before, I don't know. I would have laid money and that was going to go on the feeder. Bit of a shame really. Don't normally get that sort of shenanigans. But it does happen. Another opportunity is about to present itself. The squirrel's coming in from the right. I've got the rifle up. I've not been very pleased with the way it's gone so far. I'm not sure whether this has an effect on this shot. I'm about to give this one a nasty fright by missing it very close with a pellet. I'm pre warn you I'm going to miss. Everything looks textbook. The only thing I'm sure of is I A, missed it and B, it was my fault. Looks just like any other good one after all those spooky ones. If I'd shot at a spooky one and it had moved, I'd have put that down. To the reason why. No reason why I shouldn't shoot this one and kill it clean. Here we go. And I completely missed it. And it runs off to the right and comes back in unharmed at the bank. Just terrified it a bit. Really annoyed with that. It prompted loads of test shots afterwards, all of which were perfectly fine. So I'm going to hold my hands up. My fault. I've done some test shots now, as I said before. All's good. Taking a chill pill, had a word with myself, and a nice cup of tea. It's brightened up no end. I'm sat in the car, waiting for another opportunity to present itself. I'm pretty sure there's more out there. As if by magic, this one properly races in. I barely get a chance to turn the camera on. I normally stop and come in. Maybe I was surfing away on the net. I take my mind off my miss. It does annoy me when it happens, and it does happen on occasion. It's usually a head movement that catches you out. That was pure me failing. I'm not used to it, and I don't like it. I mean, it's an opportunity to redeem myself, which I do. Business as usual, normal service has resumed. Good solid impact there. Concentration is the key. There we go, just a few leg spasms. The abdomen's moving a fraction, but that's just nerves. As stiff as the board when I went to pick it up. The sun's come out. And it's pretty much wind free. There's still a lot of moisture on the leaves above. Pan the camera up into the air because I can keep hearing rain coming down. When I say rain, it's not falling from the sky, it's falling from the leaves. Like things are moving around, knocking the rain off. Some of it's landing on the car. Sometimes quite big clumps 
like something quite large has either landed in the trees or is running through them, disturbing the rain. So it's a bit of an indicator there's things on the move and some of those things, I suspect strongly, are grey squirrels. You hear it better on this clip. Keep hearing rain when there's no rain. The birds are going for it as well. Very nice to hear. Definitely a lovely place to sit. Quite relaxing. Nice to see the birds. But you do hear them quite often. And I've panned the camera back quite a way because I know there's a squirrel approaching through the trees. Finally managed to clock one. Here it comes. Took its time to get there. I've cut a big chunk of footage off the beginning of this one. I waited for it to arrive. I heard the leaves go in. The rain falling from the leaves, rather. I looked up and I could see the movement. I knew it wasn't a big fat crow flighting around or a buzzard. It was a squirrel moving through the branches. It's turned up now, coming down towards the feeder. I can only assume it's come from behind me, maybe crossed the pathway through the trees or it was up there sending itself. But it's come by the aerial route. When they come in like that, it's pays to sit still just to wait to see what they do. I've decided now to zoom in on it and get prepared for a shot. Carefully moving the camera around. It's on a homemade bracket. I made to fit on the door of my car. And there we go. It'll be a tempting shot. Side on. I do prefer them to be sat up with the head retracted. I'm fidgeting, I've got the gun up and ready for a shot. I'm just trying to judge whether I should take the shot. I do believe I will. Right now. Good side on headshot. I always try and aim between the eye and the ear side on. But I tend to favour the front edge of the ear as a target point. Pretty much puts the pellet through the thickest part of the brain. See the blood gushing out of its ear. It's not the sort of thing you can walk off easily. Happy with that shot. After a long wait. Another lull in proceedings. I just sit there and listen to the birds singing and squacking away up in the trees. Do enjoy it when I'm out in the woods. I like it even more when I've got a squirrel coming down the bank from the right, or any direction really. You get a chance to do the job that we told the owner we will do in return to be able to shoot on their lovely permissions. That's how UK law works. I was to come on here with my rifle, even an air rifle, without permission, that would be armed trespass. And I would be breaking the law. I'd probably be looking at a custodial sentence, I should imagine. Not good. So we offer free pest control. Most farmers are happy with free things. Who isn't, eh? As long as they got trust in you, then you've got to be trustworthy. You only do what you've agreed you'll do. You can be their eyes and ears out on their property. If some untoward was happening, you'd be able to tell them. Become quite friendly with a lot of places. The owners. Here we have a, the reason why I'm here. And bro for that matter. Got a squirrel slinking in from the right. And yet again, I'm forced to go to five times speed and see the pheasant come in from the bottom left hand corner, having a bit of a mooch about. The squirrel's gone around the back of that tree. The whole time I've got the rifle up in the air. I'm just waiting for it to stick its head out. Quite an extended speed at this. 
I thought I'd leave it in just to show you how long it took. Left the camera panned back because I wasn't quite sure where it was and I'm committing to the shot. Now it's sat still. Good side on headshot. Started to rain again, a little shower, it's a big puff of moisture at the end of the rifle. I think it was the air coming out, vaporising the raindrops. No wrong with that. Those little weeds and plants pretty much cover up the squirrel. It's quite annoying, isn't it? I'm happy with that for my last squirrel of the day. Quite a productive session yet again. Quite reliable this feeder, it's certainly turning out to be, as long as I can shoot them and not miss. See the shot there? A lot of blood come out of that. You can see some of the carnage those polymags do. Not for the squeamish. Quite happy with that pile. Ten squirrels again. And here's a bit of a mod I've been making for Bro. It's a tripod. He can't keep his feeder on top of that bin for the whole time. Well, they're going to want that for pheasant season. So I've knocked him up out of a tripod. We brought it out today. And the last thing we're going to do, because it's so far from home, is do a bit of work on the feeders before we come home. So that's all been piled into the car. Next time you see this feeder, it'll be on top of that tripod. And that ends the final video I promised you this year. Pretty much one every two weeks, from January to November, excluding December. But I may just make another one. We'll see. Stay tuned. Find out if I do. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like, subscribe and share. Thank you.